Urogenital atrophy, which is sometimes known as vulvovaginal atrophy, is a condition of aging of the vagina, which is really accelerated after the menopause, and the tissues become thinner and drier, leading to a lot of symptoms that can be very troublesome. It's primarily caused by loss of oestrogen after the menopause, although other factors can play a part in it, in it occurring. The commonest symptoms that occur are mainly those of the dryness of the vagina, of soreness, itching, and pain with intercourse. It can also cause some bleeding from time to time due to the, the, the capillaries becoming very fragile. But it's important to remember that the vagina and the bladder are very closely linked and often these symptoms occur in the bladder as well. So women often describe pain when they're passing urine, they have frequency of passing urine, they're more prone to urinary tract infections and so-called cystitis when they feel like they've got an infection but when they actually have the urine tested there's no infection there. And that's all down to the changes that we see in the urethra and the bladder which go alongside those in the vagina. The first and most important thing when managing this is to recognize the importance of it. And so many women are reluctant to mention it, and so many doctors and nurses fail to actually ask about it during a consultation. So it's really important that the subject is recognized, and then it helps to start the, the treatment. The simplest thing to do for most women is just a bit of practical advice, and knowing that there's no serious underlying problem. Many times women are told they have recurrent thrush or something of that nature, which probably isn't the case, and they treat it with thrush treatment, which may, may or may not be effective, but is often the wrong thing to do and the symptoms just come back when they stop it. So its importance is to try and recognize the underlying cause and then to treat that appropriately. For many women, just simple advice about lubricants and moisturizers can be all that they need to use and that makes the symptoms improve. Um, there are many different types of moisturizers and lubricants and it's important to check uh, which ones are the most appropriate um, and usually your pharmacy is a good place to ask about which ones are the best for certain conditions. If that's not helpful, then vaginal estrogens become the mainstay of treatment. They are very effective because they basically deal with the underlying problem, which is lack of estrogen, and they cause the vaginal tissues and the urethral tissues to go back to where they should have been before the menopause and relieve the symptoms. The standard doses of vaginal estrogens that are recognized are usually to take it every day or every night for two weeks initially, and then once the, the tissues have started to respond, then cut down to twice a week. But we often find that in clinical practice, women do need to use it a bit more frequently than that, um, so maybe three times a week or even every other day until the symptoms are completely under control, and then keep it going as a maintenance dose twice a week or, or a bit more often if need be. There is no particular restriction on the how long you can use vaginal estrogens for. You can use them for many years uh, without any undue concern. And I would recommend that women keep a regular supply because if they stop the treatment, then often the symptoms just return and they go back to square one. So it's sensible to keep, uh, keep up, to, up to date with your prescription. The concerns about vaginal estrogen have largely been around the, the possible link with hormone replacement therapy, but vaginal estrogens are very separate from hormone replacement therapy. The amount of estrogen that gets into the bloodstream with a vaginal estrogen preparation is extremely low and still well within what a, a normal women would expect to have after the menopause. So there is no concern about endometrial cancer or womb cancer, and there's no need for any extra protection to take progestogen or to have extra scans or anything like that. Obviously, if a woman experiences bleeding while she's taking the treatment, she should always get, seek advice and get that investigated in the same way as anybody else, but it's very unlikely that the treatment itself is actually the causative of that. One of the biggest concerns about vaginal estrogens is that they may increase the risk of breast cancer and that's led many people to be wary about prescribing them or to taking them. In reality, there is no evidence that vaginal estrogens cause an increased risk in breast cancer. As has already been mentioned, the dose of estrogen in this preparation is extremely low and it does not get into the bloodstream in any significant amount. Vaginal estrogens have been around for a long, long time and there's been no evidence at all that there's any increased risk of uh, breast cancer with them. And indeed, the recent Lancet meta-analysis also highlighted that vaginal estrogens did not increase the risk of breast cancer.
So the alternative options we currently have available are uh, prasterone, which is a DHEA hormone, which is a, a uh, ovule that's put into the vagina or pessary that's put into the vagina every night and this is uh, once a day once a night dosage this gives uh, good levels of DHEA into this into the um, cells and this in the DHEA is then converted into estrogen and testosterone in the cell and acts that way it seems to give good symptom control and works very effectively and has not any serious adverse effects that we are aware of so it remains a good option the other option that has also recently become available is something called a spemaphine. This is an oral tablet, so it's a tablet you take by mouth, which is treated for, used to treat the vaginal symptoms. This too has proven to be very effective at treating vaginal symptoms and is a good option for uh, women who may not want to use anything vaginally and who don't want to take a hormone because it's not a hormonal preparation. In addition, this product is available for women who've had breast cancer, provided they finish their treatment for breast cancer.